So I'm hiking up from Blue Lake, it's near where I was. The camera's all wet because I tried to camp above the snow line. There's a good six, seven inches, six inches of snow on the ground. And um, anyway, I got my tent up, was asleep, and I woke up because it had changed over to rain. And it's knocking all the snow off the trees. And then I ended up in a puddle that was really more of a lake. Um, I didn't totally swamp, but by the time I got up and realized what was going on, it was like six in the morning. And um, I had to pack while staggering around in this puddle. Everything I have is wet. I mean, my sleeping bag actually isn't wet. It's the only thing I kept dry. I mean, it's reasonably dry. But, um, totally soaked otherwise. And, um, my tent's soaked inside and out. So, um, given the temperatures, I'm probably going to go in to town to dry up because it's just, it's too cold, you know, it's like this kind of wet, it's okay when it's warm, but it's like, you also see like the trail is very wet right now. It's all melting snow, so it's like six inches of slush. So it's like 32 degree water. My feet are soaked, and they're having a hard time warming up. I'm just warming up, because I've been hiking maybe for half an hour. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm not gonna through to Stevenson. I guess I gotta go into town. So, um, uh, let's see, so coming down, I've basically got a, like a 20 mile downhill to Wind River Road from here, and it's pretty early. I think it's like 7 or 8 maybe. Um, but the problem I'm encountering is um, now, right now I'm going through snow, which is great, but a lot of it, it's like a very thin layer of snow and then uh, several inches of slush under it. And um, I got to a point where I couldn't feel my feet anymore. And you see, you know, it's just difficult to keep your feet warm in these conditions, but I couldn't feel my feet at all. So I took off my shoes. My socks were really wet. So I rang them out and just rubbed my feet for like 10, 15 seconds. Put the socks back on quick. Poured water out of my shoe. <laughs> and put them back on and they're, they, that was enough to do the trick, at least for a little bit. Now they're kind of getting bad again. But, I've got a couple miles, got maybe three, three or four miles to a, I think there's like a pit toilet or something. There's like one of those forest service bathrooms. It's just a pit, pit toilet. But, it's dry. And I'm gonna try to, if it's not too filthy, sit in there for a little bit and just, um, get my um put on change my socks out and I was thinking about maybe trying to dry out some stuff with my stove but I don't want to waste the fuel and I, I really I definitely think I'm going into Stevenson tonight it's just it's just not going to make sense like it's going to be a, it would be otherwise a crazy wet night my, my, my tent had a pool of about it probably wasn't that much water, but it was like around the sides of my sleeping pad. And um, I kept everything that I need to keep dry in my sleeping bag with me. My sleeping bag, again, stayed pretty dry because I was really careful about how I had it. But there was like a big pool inside the tent. The rain fly obviously is wet. And everything else is wet. So we'll do an assessment down here and see what, see what situation we get. So the big thing also with 
Washington State in the rainy season is you have to ford things that you could just have stepped across. You can actually see the stepping stones under the water, about a foot under the water. There is no way I'm doing a hop, skip, and jump over this. Well, actually, maybe I could. Let me see if I can. I don't know. I was thinking I was just going to plow through the water, but let's see if I can do a jump. Ooh, maybe I can. Uh, um, oh, this is kind of reminiscent of the last time I fell in the stream. So, <laughs> oh gosh, darn it. It's, so, it's like so close, but so far. Um, let me see what's down there. See, I don't want to like, I know if I go further down, it's going to be in a bog. Yeah, there's water over here. Well, in the interest of, oh, God darn it. In the interest of safety, I'm just going to plow through it. So yeah, so the other fun thing I've learned about hiking in Washington in the rainy season is that you have to be really ready to just sort of just fly through really cold streams like that. Oh, my goodness. It'll wake you up. It'll wake you up in the morning. Oh, yeah. So if any of you needed any further this waiting uh, from hiking out here this time of year, that's the PCT over there. This is just a bog. And basically the trail is just a culvert. Um, there was about a tenth of a mile that was about as to my knees. I had to bushwhack it. The problem with bushwhacking around here, these are, I believe, are all hunters who are smart enough not to stay on the trail. Um, I mean, there's just no way you could you could hike that. So we got bushwhacked around a little bit. But um, yeah, this is crazy. I've never. I've never hiked anything like this. <laughs> but, you know, on the upside, now I know what hiking stuff like this is like. Now, even though I'm down below snow line, and I really am, trail's lovely, my feet feel warm, I feel warm, so lovely, and now, get another forward. <laughs> oh boy, here we are. You can see, it's just everything is like overflowing. Um, it was gonna be a long day, that's all I can say. But you really do, these shoes, these Polar Tech shoes, I was thinking of, this morning when I got up, I was in basically in a lake of ice, that was about six inches deep, in parts. I was frantically trying to get my tent disassembled and get my things into my backpack. Well, I, I packed my pack first, as best I could. And then inside my tent, um, with the goal of just trying to keep my, my um, sleeping bag dry. And then um, my feet got really wet because I was scampering around trying to get my tent undone and just trying to move. Ow. Ooh. But um these shoes usually warm like my experience again it's not that I haven't had a lot of experience with these. But this morning was the only time where even after walking for half an hour my feet weren't getting warmer, they were actually getting colder. And what I ended up having to do um I had ice a crust of ice over the the laces. I had to knock that off. I took the shoes off, rang out the socks, just to rub my feet for like 10 seconds. I might've said this in another video, but um, now my feet are actually warm and I was thinking it could be hypo, but no, it's the way these are, just, these are just a really good shoe. I really, really like these. Um, but I, I, do, I do realize also from my experience this morning, there is a limit to these and I think you really would not want to go in wet, cold temperatures. Well, the, th the thing is, you're not going to really encounter wet, wet and snow outside of the temperature range I'm in now. You know, I mean, I guess if you're going up in elevation, or if it just got, if the temperature dropped a ton, you could go from 
a wet situation to a really cold one. And then I think you'd be in, you'd be in trouble pretty much no matter what shoes you have on, except for maybe waterproof shoes like sealed rubber, you know, Alaska Alaska boots. That's what I call them. I don't even know what they're called. Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember. Um, but anyway, these are these have turned out great. These also are wet, but they work really well as a shell. They still keep my hands warm, you know, as much as I need. Because you're, when you're moving, your body's making heat. Best thing to remember in, uh, on any sort of hike like this, you just gotta keep eating. Keep eating and keep moving. You guys really take short breaks. And also drink water. You gotta keep drinking water. So, anyway, today's gonna be a long one.